help me God. So help me God. So help me God. So help me God. So help me God. Hey y'all, um, this is Rob Lee. I am so happy to welcome you to another episode of So Help Me Pod, a bonus episode where we're not actually talking about the particular presidents I've chosen to study, but about the office of the president and all that it entails. Uh, today as episode, I wanted to talk about Air Force One. No, 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 not the shoes, not the shoes. Air Force One is the official call sign in the United States Air Force that bears within it the current president of the United States of America. It is also a common to call the aircraft Boeing VC-25, which is the president's primary aircraft, Air Force One. You'd think of it as the, the president, the, the, the aircraft that's white and blue. That is what we think of when we think of aircraft Air Force One, but it's actually VC-25, which has a designation of Air Force One when the president is on it. Air Force One's call sign was first enacted in 1953, while a plane carrying the president at the time, Dwight D. Eisenhower, was aboard. The presidents dating as far back as Teddy Roosevelt have taken to the skies for various campaign or or other official businesses. Uh, The FDR was the first president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, the other Roosevelt, was the first president to fly while in office. Air Force One has had moments of real horror and terror as our nation was facing some of the worst atrocities that we have witnessed. That said, the Air Force One has risen to the occasion uh, to protect the President of the United States. The first instance of United States Air Force escort of Air Force One came during the state funeral of John F. Kennedy, where 50 fighters followed the plane, symbolizing the states and unity of our union. More recently, President Biden, even as recently as President Biden even, uh, employed Air Force One escorts um, uh, of the United States Air Force while he flew over the Israeli war zone to visit the Israeli government. Um, So we're talking as recently as last week, this has been employed to protect the President of the United States. It has been the tradition since President Reagan for the outgoing President of the United States to fly on board VC-25 to their home outside of Washington, wherever that is, It is a courtesy extended to them by the President of the United States. The VC-25 has a planned replacement as they are reaching 30 years old. You'll remember in the 2016 election, there was considerable hubbub over the cost of uh, Boeing 747-8, which was scheduled to be the next presidential aircraft. Um, There's been conversation over the cost of the aircraft. Um, However, uh, there have been uh, significant leeways placed to give give the President what he or she might need to enact their job. So ultimately, while there has been campaign promises to cut prices, uh, that's happened a little bit, but not much, because it costs a lot to fly the president across the world. Additionally, there have been a supersonic aircraft ready that are uh, that have been made ready for use of the president of the United States, though we have not seen that employed yet. Air Force One is housed and maintained at Joint Base Andrews, Um, The president travels from the White House to Joint Base Air Andrews via a helicopter uh, maintained by the United States Marines and carries the call sign Marine One. So we'll see the president walk out on the White House lawn uh, up to a helicopter, which is called Marine One with the designation Marine One, and flies to Joint Base Andrews. Uh, Subsequently, if a vice president is on board a, a, a vessel, it is also called Air Force Two. Though, though there's conversation over whether that has official Air Force designation like Air Force One has. Since September 2001, when Air Force One was quite literally the only friendly airplane over the United States airspace, um, it has used mechanisms in its employ to keep the airplane high above uh, any possible attack or recourse from enemy fighters. On board the VC-25 Air Force One, uh, there is a medical annex capable of surgery. There is press seating, both Air Force One officer and senior staff quarters, presidential quarters and hosting space, and a situation room capable of engaging orders uh, to and from the military. While the security measures, uh, and a lot about the plane actually, are classified to us uh, measly citizens, uh, we know that there are anti-missile and tactical response capabilities to avoid enemy fire. It is also believed that there are tactical abilities for offensive engagement against enemy combatants that would keep anyone at bay from trying to attack Air Force One. 
The current VC-25 has the ability to refuel in air, making it possible for the plane to stay above land for prolonged periods should it be required. It is also believed to have special radiation shield material to prevent incursion from nuclear attack. All that's to say, it is a flying fortress. Um, there have been plenty. I remember growing up, there was this National Geographic um, uh, uh, episode that, that covered Air Force One, and I stood amazed at just the intricacies that they go through to protect and ensure the president's safety aboard the, uh, the, the aircraft. Uh, you can also check out Air Force One in plenty of other places, including the Reagan National Library, Presidential Library um, in Simi Valley, California, as well as uh, the big screen. You can see Harrison Ford's uh, uh, blockbuster hit where he is playing the president and Air Force One is hijacked, something that I don't believe could happen based on what we just outlined in terms of security capabilities and the fine work of our Secret Service uh, men and women. All that's to say, it is an amazing plane. There's plenty that I could cover that is not covered here, but I hope it might pique your interest to do some more research as to what's on board, what's available to this uh, to this aircraft, and what this aircraft can do. Um, also, if you're on TikTok, there's some pretty amazing videos of, of, uh, of Israeli citizens watching Air Force One fly over with their military escort uh, to the to land um, in Tel, uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, to, to land where they were going to make sure that people were safe um, as the president visited an active war zone. You can also visit my online Facebook page where I talk a little bit more about the active war zone. You know, people are saying that this is the, the second time in history with President Biden being the first and second time uh, to be in an active war zone. That's not entirely correct. It would be an active war zone on foreign soil. We know that both Presidents Madison and Lincoln visited war zones on our soil during the War of 1812 and the Civil War. All that's to say I'm getting off topic here, but I hope that you might enjoy this, find it more meaningful, and get to work exploring what it might have to say about what our country does and what we value. Uh, thanks again for tuning in, and I hope you check out our presidential database, which you'll hear about in just a second in the credits. You've been listening to So Help Me Pod, a podcast of Beloved Journal in conjunction with Pacific School of Religion in Berkeley, California. The podcast is offered in partial completion of the Doctor of Ministry degree for the Reverend Robert W. Lee. All opinions and insights offered are solely owned by that of those who offered them and do not reflect the views of stakeholders in the project. There have been 45 men and 46 presidential administrations, all of them unique Some of them have been more interesting than others, some of them more terrifying than others. All have been part of the grand expression of democracy on the North American continent and part of the wider conversation of self-governance in the world. These men have failed profoundly, and we have failed profoundly in following their leadership along with our own sometimes antiquated and backwards ways of viewing and acting in the world. That said, this form of leadership is unlike few other. And the greatest gift we have has been given in the ways in which the American experiment continues to prosper despite our terrible misgivings. We are better off because of these men. And we are forever in their debt. For more information, visit www.robleethenumber4.com slash presidents.